This is 590 KLBJ Radio. Good morning again, everybody. I'm Chuck Meyer. Day two at Cowboys Camp. We are right above Autograph Alley where the Cowboys come by. And any minute now, we're expecting Deion Sanders in his $30,000 boombox equipped air conditioned golf cart. Big question, though, on the field this year for Deion. He's being tried out at wide receiver. Barry Switzer wants to give him a shot there. What's going to happen? Get even, Cowboy! Green, 45, hut! Hut! I came here to be the best ever and to retire my mama for the rest of her life. You got one of the baddest boys coming out in the draft. Who's next? Who's next? I mean, he can play off. He can bait the quarterback. He can jump routes. Um, very smooth in his back pedal. Big kid. As I mentioned, about six foot and a half, 190 pounds, long arms, and, and very good explosion to the football. And when he got there, he played the ball extremely well. He went up against some great wide receivers at that five-star challenge uh, in solo coverage, plus also played some off coverage and, and made a lot of plays. He could play safety or corner. He's played both in college. Uh, kind of a can't-miss draft pick, I think, if you're, if you're picking in the first round, because if he doesn't work out a corner, he can certainly play free safety because he has those instincts and vision. Young fella. What's up now? This is how y'all doing it now? This is how we did it. Oh my God. Y'all paved the way, we kept it going. It's in for Ryder. It's in it, by Deion Sanders. What a catch. How was your whole stay in? Deadass, you like it? Loved it. Coming in, starting that corner immediately. You know, they talking about See, me and you. Yeah, first yeah, yeah, first yeah, since Deion. That don't happen, bad boy. It just started. Started picking up, started going fast, fast. The game was slowing down for me. Started enjoying it. Intercepted by who else but Jalen Ramsey. That's what your daddy's always telling me, man. Dion was the best practice player first, but y'all got to see Dion on the field. Oh, man. Hey, you set that tone. I'm trying to meet it. I used to go to the quarterback and say, look, I'm going to get you today, you today, you today, <laughs> you today. <laughs> Oh my God! Do you know who this man is? I know who it is. That's the the, the man. Dude, Everybody talk about this man. Coach, you instilled something in us, man, on this practice field that was just legendary. You know how many times they tell us stories about you making people bear crawl? I it never, I like never that. made a soul bear crawl. <laughs> <laughs> he did it. He did that. He did it. He did it. What you see in this guy, Coach? I saw a big here. Deion Sanders. Huge. The difference is, you did it here, and you did it up yonder. Yeah. Yeah. He's done it here, but he hasn't done it up yonder yet. Not yet. But goodness, what talent. This is the first time in your life that you're going to feel vulnerable. You're going to be sitting there on draft day saying, okay, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where I'm going. And one team could change your destiny, man. Right. And I've seen some great players go to some bad teams, and something happens. But I've seen some dogs go anywhere. And they make it happen. The fifth pick in the 2016 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Jalen Ramsey, defensive back, Florida State. So the first corner to start as a freshman at Florida State since Deion Sanders is chosen fifth overall. The same spot Deion Sanders was chosen by Atlanta, and the team closest to Atlanta, not named Atlanta, just chose Jalen Ramsey, fifth overall. Jalen Ramsey, defensive back, two-time second team All-American. Name Sauce, you better be pretty good. And he has been very good. There's just not many people on earth like Sauce Gardner. Keep an eye on the sauce today. That's what you're trying to tell me. Sauce is going to cut off all the life support to an entire side of the field. I was not expecting to see somebody quite that twitchy and explosive in short areas. That was Sauce Gardner coming in hot on the cap blitz. Third and six. Taylor Sauce. Oh, and it's picked up. That's Gardner. Gardner to the 10. Sauce Gardner from Cincinnati. Yes, he's got a chance to be number one. The All-America corner, Sauce Gardner. I want him as a New York Jet number four overall. Two is buried. Great tackler, shows a tremendous amount of effort. 
To the draft, I didn't have a lot of conversations on Sauce Gardner. There wasn't a lot to discuss. You know, every year there's a couple of prospects that are so good and clean, there's not a lot to talk about. What stands out is just, you know, his outstanding measurables. Number one, his length, his speed, his feet, I think his eyes, his route recognition, uh, his intelligence, toughness. You know, he, you know, obviously only, he didn't allow any touchdowns in, in a three year span, uh, uh, over a thousand coverage snaps. Uh, everything you look for in a cornerback. Swaggy Sauce Gardner. How you doing, bro? It's Joe Douglas. I'm great, man. Blessed to be here, man. Hey, man. You ready to join the family? Hey, man. I just want to thank y'all, man. If, if, if this happened at four, man, I'm going to be the highest draft in Cincinnati history, man. Well, here, here it is. Let's, Let's do it. it. Let's With the fourth pick in the 2022 NFL Draft, the, the New York, York Jets select... Sauce Gardner, <laughs> defensive back, Cincinnati. It was a historic season for the Bearcats, and this may very well have been their best player. Consensus All-American did not allow more than 13 yards to any receiver in any game all year. In all, he allowed only eight catches for 60 yards, and for his career, in over a thousand snaps in coverage, he never allowed a touchdown. Lewis, you told us earlier tonight, in your mind, he might be the best player in this draft. All right, Sauce, so you detailed your journey here from the fourth on the depth chart to the fourth overall pick. How does it feel? And it feels so great, man. I didn't even think about it that way. No, it's all God's plan, though. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. We just got to go hard. Uh. Adrenaline pumping through my veins, can't relax, original, I am not the same as these cats, I sting them if they never ever mind and they beeswax, I don't ever cap, but I'm wearing like three hats, never been a rat, but I know where the cheese at, you'll never get a trophy cause they all here where we at, you better believe that, when it's all said and done, I still be here standing, never took a loss and it ain't something that I'm planning, I dare you to say something, my focus is A1, every dog has his day, it's been mine since day one, this is real. You know how I am when we in here watching film. Like I'm, I'm always like, yeah, we gonna take, we gonna look at the good, we gonna take the good, but I'm all, I always point out something that we could be doing yeah, better. Yeah. Like whether we, whether it could be us being physical at the line, mm -hmm. whether it's whatever the case may be. That's how I, that's how I view the game. Like I'm yeah. I'm that tough of a critic on myself, and that would be like one of the biggest things that I say. Try to implement that into your really. It's a, it's a lifestyle. It become yeah. a lifestyle. That's why I'm always asking that into your Lifestyle, yeah. This is a little pick, ain't it? Yeah. Okay, he. Oh my God, you fell? Yeah, I fell, man. Yeah, this one. This for one. Show. This one for sure. Hold on. Huh. Stride, stride. Give me that. Oh, man, that straight little play. I ain't gonna cap. Come on, man. I make plays. You see that? That straight little play. I ain't gonna cap to you. I already knew they was gonna go deep, though. How you knew that? Because whenever they was backed up against Georgia, that I knew playing them. They was gonna run the same plays against Georgia that they get, did against us. So when they came in the game, they ran everything against Georgia against us. I mean, like, you up. know what live about the drone? You really in zero coverage. Everybody going away from you. Safety all the way over there. But I don't oh, know. Oh, straight. <laughs> straight play. Hey, hold on, are you talking that talk to oh, their yeah. sideline? Oh yeah, we're gonna get plenty for that this year. <laughs> Yeah, I had two picks that game, three pass breakups. 
Oh yeah. You Couple was, tackles. You was living like that in this game, huh? Oh yeah. You just you can frustrate them throughout the whole game mm-hmm. by beating them to the spot, beating them yep. with your feet. You know what I mean? What you did in college, you made a lot of plays in college. It's gonna translate. Coming here, and, and I feel like um, I feel like good corners like being on a team that also has good receivers because you know you're gonna yeah. get that work and you're gonna be able to polish yourself. Yeah, and that's how I see. In practice, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. So, so you got a as a rookie, you got a good a good duo and really a whole good group, but for sure a good duo yeah. to really polish your skills and as a rookie and and learn that game, let it slow down for you and just learn as much as you can from them, whether it's through experience or through, like you said, like little conversations yeah. at the end of practice, whatever it might be. With all that, taking all that in, man, you gonna, you gonna be straight. I ain't even worried about that. Out of high school, I had zero offers. Uh, went to a prep school in Columbia, South Carolina. That didn't go as planned. I was back at home working at FedEx. Uh, I was working, you know, loading the trucks then. And then, you know, I went on to South Carolina State uh, 2018 came around. Well, I had to sit out the 2017 season, pretty much like a gray shirt. Mm-hmm. 2018, 2018 season came around. Um, I told the coaches they wouldn't regret giving me this opportunity. And, you know, I just carry that chip on my shoulder day by day, each and every year, each and every season. And, you know, um, by the time spring practice was over with, I was placed on scholarship, uh, you know, and I never looked back since. And I'm here now with the L.A. Rams. What did those days at FedEx teach you? How did they form you? Um, really just, you know, not taking nothing for granted. Because at any moment, you know, you can be at home and just working and not doing something that you actually love. So I'm doing something that I actually love. And it also taught me how to run fast because, you know, dogs and stuff I got chased Come by. on, really? Yeah. FedEx is kind of crazy. When you're driving the trucks and had to jump out and you see all these dogs. So, <laughs> yeah, I ran a couple of times. Zacchaeus in motion to the top of your screen. Off the play fake in trouble and down he goes. The Kobe Durant, who had the pick earlier, gets his first career sack. Number three, senior Omarion Cooper. Omari Cooper is from Lehigh Acres, Florida. He transferred to Colorado from Florida State University in 2023. At Florida State, he played in 20 games with seven starts throughout two seasons, totaling 30 tackles, three interceptions, four pass breakups, and one forced fumble. In 2022, he played in 12 games with four starts and reported 14 tackles, one interception, and one forced fumble. In his freshman season, he played in eight games with starts in each of the final three contests and recorded 16 tackles, two interceptions, and four pass breakups. He was named the Devon Darling Defensive Freshman of the Year at Florida State. At Colorado, he played in nine games in 2023, starting in eight. He missed the final three games of the season. He registered 37 total tackles, 32 solo tackles, both the highest on the team among cornerbacks. Two tackles for loss, one sack, one forced fumble, one fumble recovery, and five pass breakups. Tied for the most on the team with Travis Hunter. His first sack of his career came at home against USC in week five, taking down former Heisman winner Caleb Williams for an eight yard loss. He also set a new career high for total tackles in a game with eight at home against USC in week five. Omarion Cooper has been recognized at CU as a football student of the week. Number 17, redshirt freshman, Isaiah Harge. Isaiah Harge is from Hollywood, Florida. He attended St. Thomas Aquinas High School in Fort Lauderdale, Florida under head coach Roger Harriet. St. Thomas Aquinas High School has a combined 51-2 record the past four seasons with four straight Florida State Championships. As a junior and senior, he combined to catch 48 passes for 733 yards and 10 touchdowns, also picking up 34 yards on kick return and 104 on punt returns for a total of 883 all-purpose yards. His senior season was a perfect 14-0, winning the school's fourth straight and 14th overall state championship. Harge had 26 receptions 
for 380 yards and four touchdowns, 100 return yards on punts and kickoffs, for a total of 480 all-purpose yards. He added nine tackles and two pass breakups on defense. His brother, Ron Harsh III, was a defensive back at Colorado State and declared for the 2024 NFL Draft. At Colorado, Harge played in three games in 2023 using his red shirt. He made his college debut against TCU in week one. He appeared in the first three games of the season exclusively on special teams. He converted from wide receiver to defensive back. Isaiah Harge has been recognized at CU as a football student of the week. Number 24, senior Preston Hodge. Preston Hodge was born on September 18th in DeSoto, Texas. His hometown is listed as Waxahachie, Texas. Hodge transferred to Colorado from Liberty University in 2024 as an undergraduate transfer with two years to play one. At Liberty, during the 2022 and 2023 season, he played in 25 games, registering 60 tackles, three tackles for loss, two interceptions, 13 passes defended, one forced fumble, and an interception return touchdown. In 2022, he played in 12 games with 12 tackles and three passes defended. In 2023, he played in 13 games with 48 tackles, 32 unassisted, three tackles for loss, two interceptions, 10 passes defended, and one forced fumble. His pick six came against Massachusetts, where he returned an interception, 62 yards for a touchdown. He had the ninth highest PFF pass coverage grade in the FBS on the season with an 88.8. Preston Hodge was also recognized as a football student of the week. Number 18, redshirt freshman, Adam Hopkins. Adam Hopkins was born in Thomasville, Georgia. He attended Thomas County Central High School under coach Justin Rogers as a wide receiver and cornerback. As Thomas County Central, he finished his career with 111 receptions for 1,555 yards and 16 touchdowns, adding 29 rushes for 29 yards, and he completed both of his career pass attempts for 14 yards. Defensively, he had 31 tackles, two interceptions, eight pass breakups. He helped lead Thomas County Central to a 12-1 record as a senior when he had 33 receptions for 490 yards and six touchdowns and added four rushes for 33 yards. He was named the All-Region 1 6A first team as a wide receiver as a senior. He picked up the Rival Stick'em Award in June 2021 given to the player with the best hands. He was invited to play in the 2023 Under Armour All-America game. At Colorado, he played in three games, primarily on special teams. He recorded four total tackles, including three unassisted. Number 12, junior, and winner of the 2023 Paul Horning Award for the most versatile player in major college football, Travis Hunter. Travis Hunter was born on May 18, 2003 in West Palm Beach, Florida. Hunter moved to Georgia as an eighth grader. He attended Collins High School in Suwannee, Georgia, and played four years of varsity football for the Collins Hill Eagles under coach Lenny Gregory. He is the most talented skill player I've ever coached or seen. I've been around a lot of really good football players. I've never seen a kid with his skill set. I mean, ball skill, football awareness. He's off the chart as far as football IQ. He's passionate, he loves the game, and you know, he's a coach's dream. His 48 receiving touchdowns broke the Georgia State record previously held by Braxton Hicks. 
career defensive numbers include 116 tackles, 19 interceptions, 18 pass breakups, four tackles for loss, three fumble recoveries, two forced fumbles, and one quarterback hurry. Hunter's senior season, Collins Hill was 15-1 and, and won the school's first Georgia State Championship. As a senior, Hunter was named a first-team All-American and the Georgia Player of the Year by Max Preps and the Atlanta Journal-Constitution's Georgia Player of the Year. 100% if they lean on the run game. Here's Horn on first down. Throwing on one-on-one -on -one coverage with Travis Hunter. He went up and got it! Diving for a touchdown! What a play! Travis Hunter showing why he's a five-star. One of the best players in the country delivers on a 50-yard score. <laughs> well, Sam Horn's walking a little gingerly. I think they may give him a break. Run the football. No, nope. just throw it up to maybe the most dynamic player in the 2022 class. Travis Hunter just goes up, the coverage is there, just out leaps him. Wanna know why there's so much buzz about that young man? There's a great example. A playmaker just making a big play. Four receptions for 68 yards and a touchdown. Take as many looks as you wanted this one. As good a catch as you'll see. Went up and got it. And then dove into the end zone. And even the security police officers are impressed with that score. He also played point guard on the basketball team at Collins Hill. Travis Hunter was a consensus five-star recruit and the nation's top-ranked recruit in the class of 2022. 24-7 Sports rated Travis Hunter a perfect 100 and ranked him the number one recruit in the nation on the top 24-7 the top cornerback and top player from Georgia. Rivals rated him a perfect 6.1 and ranked him as the top recruit in the class, the top athlete in the class, and top ranked player from Georgia. Prep Star ranked him as the best player in the nation. He was the highest ranked recruit to commit to an HBCU. Before freshman season, he played in the 2022 Polynesian Bowl, earning offensive MVP honors with five receptions for 54 yards while also getting an interception on defense. Jackson State defensive back Travis Hunter took to the transfer portal today. Everybody remembers how good he was back in high school. He was the top overall prospect in the 2022 class. He made eye-popping plays throughout his career. Now he plays at Jackson State with Deion Sanders. You can see right here how special he is in coverage. Off man looking back at the quarterback as he's covering the wide receiver. He had two interceptions in limited time this season. He also had seven pass breakups. As you can see with some of the plays here, he's in lockstep out, in, out on an island in man coverage. And he's just so fluid, so smooth in coverage. Like I said, seven pass breakups um, in, in limited time this season. And just how he can play the ball in the air is, is extremely special. Then you see him on offense right here. He can be used on offense. He takes the end around here. He's got the speed. He's got the athleticism. He's just such a, such a special player with the ball in his hand. He was a, he'll be a 99 overall grade for us, meaning that he'll, he has the potential to be a top five NFL draft pick. Could we see Travis Hunter in Boulder? We'll see. Travis Hunter transferred to Colorado in 2023 with four years to play three. He has two years of eligibility remaining. At Colorado, he recorded 57 receptions, 721 yards, and five touchdowns on the offensive side of the ball. 
On defense, he had 30 total tackles and tied for the team lead with three interceptions. Hunter set school records against TCU on September 2nd, 2023. He had 138 plays from scrimmage, 59 of 81 on offense, 79 of 79 on defense in the Colorado debut. He had the most receptions in a starting debut at wide receiver and most receptions first CU game of career at 11. Hunter is the only FBS player in at least the last 20 seasons to record 100 yards receiving and an interception in the same game. In addition to being the Paul Horning Award winner, Travis Hunter is a consensus first team All-American, first team All-Purpose, First-team athlete, second-team all-purpose, all-Pac-12 first-team, all-Pac-12 second-team, and a first-team academic, All-America. Number 30, sophomore, Braden Keith. Braden Keith is from Broomfield, Colorado. He attended Legacy High School, the class of 2022. At Legacy High School, he played three seasons of varsity football for head coach Jay Madden. He played in 22 games with 68 total tackles, 10 unassisted, one for a loss, one fumble recovery, and six interceptions. During his senior season, he helped lead Legacy to a 6-5 record and an appearance in the Colorado State playoffs. At Colorado, during the 2022 and 2023 seasons, he did not see any game action. He has previously been acknowledged as a football student of the week. Number one, sophomore, Hormani McLean. Hormani McLean is from Lakeland, Florida. He attended Lakeland High School, the class of 2023. He transferred to Lakeland for his senior season to play for coach William Castle. He played in 10 games for Lakeland, has 16 total tackles, five pass breakups, two interceptions, and a forced fumble. He helped Lakeland to a 14-0 season and a Florida 4S state championship. He was a member of the 2022 Max Preps All-America team. He was also a member of the 2022 Under Armour All-America team. Prior to Lakeland High School, he played two seasons of varsity football at Lake Gibson under coach Rich Pringle. He had 58 total tackles as well as 19 interceptions in his two seasons at Lake Gibson. He set a school record with 10 interceptions in his junior season, breaking his own record of nine the previous season. He was named to the Max Preps Junior All-America team. He was named as Ledger's Big School Defensive Player of the Year in both 2020 and 2021. He helped Lake Gibson go 9-4 and four and reach the semifinals of Florida's 7A playoffs. He played both offense and defense his sophomore season due to injuries and had nine interceptions and 29 tackles and nine starts at cornerback and added 468 receiving yards to help Lake Gibson go 11-2. A consensus five-star prospect and top-ranked cornerback in the class by the recruiting services, the 24-7 composite ranked him as the number two overall prospect in the class at .9974, the top ranked cornerback and number one player from Florida. Rivals rated him as 6.1 and as the number three prospect in the nation, the top ranked cornerback and top player from Florida. The on three consensus had him rated at 98.81 as the number three prospect in the nation, the top ranked cornerback and top player from Florida. At Colorado, during the 2023 season, he played in nine games starting in four. He recorded 13 total tackles, including six unassisted, one tackle for loss, and two pass breakups. He was also named a football student of the week. Number 
Number eight, sophomore, DJ McKinney. Dylan Jordan McKinney is from Colleyville, Texas. He attended Colleyville Heritage High School and played three seasons of varsity football for head coach Kirk Martin. At Colleyville Heritage, he totaled 35 tackles, five interceptions, four passes defended, and three quarterback hurries in his senior season. He led the Panthers to an 8-1 record in 2020 and went undefeated in district play that season and lost only to Mansfield Summit in the Texas 5A Division I state playoff quarterfinals. He was named first team all district. He also played basketball and track and field. McKinney is an undergraduate transfer from Oklahoma State University with three years to play three. He played two seasons at Oklahoma State University, redshirting as a true freshman. He played in all 14 games during the 2023 season, finished the season with 38 tackles and five pass breakups. He had a career high seven tackles against Texas in the Big 12 championship game. I have a full profile of DJ McKinney on my channel. Number 34, redshirt freshman, Namir Robinson. Namir Robinson is from Seattle, Washington. He attended Skyline High School. He played varsity football for head coach Cameron Elizara. He helped Skyline to an eight and three record and a playoff berth with five interceptions, six passes defended, and 36 total tackles. He also had over 500 combined receiving and rushing yards on offense. He also played basketball. At Colorado, during the 2023 season, he appeared in one game and redshirted. He made his college debut in the final regular season game against Utah. Namir's father is Nate Robinson, a former professional basketball player for the NBA and the NBA's first three-time slam dunk champion. Number 46, redshirt freshman, Israel Solomon. Israel Solomon is from Dallas, Texas. He attended Powerhouse IMG Academy in Clearwater, Florida, the class of 2023. At IMG Academy, he played his senior year of football for head coach Billy Miller. He was named as the defensive captain and recorded 45 tackles, four interceptions, five pass breakups, and two and a half sacks. He was named Player of the Week six times. He was also a junior Olympic boxer. At Colorado, during the 2023 season, he did not see any game action and redshirted. Damn, it's a lot of people out there tonight. First and foremost, I gotta thank God. You know, without him, I wouldn't be here. You know, I wanna thank my mom right there, Elisa Gardner. I appreciate you being my superhero my whole life. You was my role model. My brother, Alante Gardner back there, Alexis Gardner, my sister. You know, I want to thank the Jets organization for, you know, taking a chance on me, you know, allow allowing me to be a part of the defense. Uh, I want to thank all my coaches from Little League to Detroit King High School, Cincinnati, everywhere. Last but not least, I got to thank Detroit. The east side of Detroit, man. And Seven Mile, you know, it was hard growing up, man. It really was the, the neighborhood that I stayed in. You know, a lot of violence going on, but, you know, that, that was just the adversity. That's what it took for me to get here, man. So I appreciate it, and I appreciate everybody for coming. What time is it? Showtime, prime time. Six-time All-Pro cornerback who racked up 53 career interceptions won two Super Bowls. He's one of the prototypical, or if not the only, as he would point out, five down players, three on defense, one on special teams, and the next on offense. He is prime time. Hello, Dion. I'm excited, man. I mean, to walk out there and look right there is unbelievable. I'm really humbled right now. I'm seeing you right here, and it, it kind of is hitting you in a way that I haven't because seen you before. Because you're here, man. I mean, I just left my hometown, Fort Myers, Florida. 
And you think about, man, I just left two days ago where it all started. I just took my kids to the little apartment in the projects where I grew up. The people that know this game, that, that built, established this game, said that you are that guy. And uh, that's very humbling, man. Got to be here. Yeah, he's got to be on that board. He's got to be. Scared to death to throw at him. <laughs> never, never did. That was rule number one against Dion. Throw to somebody else. Don't let him touch the ball and don't kick it to him. Get beat by somebody else. Don't get beat by Deion Sanders. It, it was amazing that teams had to calculate the odds. If I throw a pass to that side, what are the odds that I'm going to score a touchdown that way or he's going to score a touchdown that way? Because you had a little bit of a way of making people think they were open, making quarterbacks believe that wide receiver was open just to set the trap so that you could have the moment. He is not open. That's an optical illusion. Because he will close that gap and be there when the ball's there. You were one of the greatest students studying your opponents. I think it's time for you to walk some people through what you would do night before a game, week before I a studied, game. Man, I studied. I studied so darn much, Coach. I, I, it's an iconic picture online that you can find. That I'm, I'm, you can see my uniform laid out, and I'm sitting back, and I had on these dollar sign underwear, which I thought were my good luck draws, you know. <laughs> I, I couldn't play with that in dollar sign draws before the game. And you would think that I'm just chilling. But if you zoom in, it's a little video recorded in my lap, and I'm watching film right up until kickoff. I knew everything about my opponent, his likes, his dislikes. And I, I, I study coordinators, not just players. Yeah. Yeah. Coordinators stay, yeah. players change, and coordinators just use the guys like checkers. So I studied those guys. Now you couple that with talent and a work ethic, and you're here. Yeah. I think I know the answer to this, but I'll ask it anyway, that, that your toughest opponent, you lined Jerry up. Jerry Rice, man. God. Oh, please tell me when you lined up and stuck your hand out there and he sort of glared at you. And what was the raw emotion inside I want, you? I wanted to go at him. Contrary to what people believe, Coach, I never said a word on the field. I never talked junk to my opponent. Never, ever. Because we had respectful battles. So it was like, okay, let's shake hands. It's, it's sort of like boxers tapping gloves. That's what I want to do. Let's shake hands now. Let's get it on because this is what they came to see. No question. Me and you get down and it wasn't no help. Like, it's yeah. going to be me and you. That's what they want to see. Let's do this. They were going for Jerry Rice. Knocked down by Deion Sanders. In the end zone. Interception, Sanders. Running with Rice. I love that battle. I wouldn't be prime if Jerry wasn't Jerry. You need, I needed the Jerry's, I needed the Mike Irvins, you know, I needed the Chris Carters, I, I needed those guys to be who I was. And Jerry was in condition to run all game long, man. So that was a challenge to me. Tell me about the return game, because... Oh, you know the, the gift of return. You gotta convince 10 guys that you could make it happen. And I always knew who missed their block because that was the first guy to help me up when they tackled me. <laughs> that was the first, he's like, Prime, my bad, I got you. You know, the first return I had in Atlanta, I bought everyone Gucci watches, the whole team, including the coaches. Touchdown, I bought the whole team one. The whole punt return team. Deion Sanders told us yesterday that for every touchdown he gets on a punt return, he will give the blocking people three choices, a Gucci watch, a bunch of money, or a gold chain. Right now, he just forked up about five grand of that bonus money he got yesterday. <laughs> and at Dallas, it's four for the row. We get four touchdowns, we get in the Rolex. They was trying to kill people like that, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they was trying to kill people for that Rolex, man. Yeah, so it was just kind of incentive for the special teams. Sanders to midfield. A foot race to the 20. <laughs> Say touchdown, Deion Sanders. On the punt return, he did it again. Yeah. 
Let's go. We just gotta go hard. Uh. 